We have come this far by faith. We are kept by the power of God. God is good and faithful. It is our prayer that the seeds planted in your heart through the hearing of the word of God will bring positive change. This is Gifted Church Podcast, introducing Pastor Kwame. We are counting down to Christmas and I want to thank God for your life and I want to wish you Merry Christmas in advance and as we share God's word, I pray that you take some time and listen to the word of the Lord because it can be a very busy season where you go up and down and I want to remind you that we're going to have a three-day fast sometime next week to kind of wrap up the year. So um, I will show up my face next week to announce the three-day fast and I pray that you will come on board for us to wait upon the Lord to hear and to respond. He says, I set myself up to hear what the Lord will say. Eternal Father, you are always speaking and we pray that we will hear you. Just as I am without one plate, thy blood was shed for me that bid me to come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come, I come. I speak into the life of your people that they will be covered under the shadow of the Almighty. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice who is going through a very lonely moment will be strengthened by the word. For that word is light. I speak over your life, child of God, that you will rise to the occasion and become all that God has said you will be. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Somebody say amen. All right, so today's uh, podcast is pretty much uh, interesting. Uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, Paul says, in Galatians 4, 4 and 5, but I'm just focusing on the few lines in four it says now but when the set time had fully come god sent his son when the set time had fully come i want to uh, kind of share with you about How to know the set time of God or signs of the set time. Um, one of the things that everybody is on the same page on is that God's time is the best, but it is not the same as our time. Those two statements are true for all of us. We know that God's time is the best, but it's not the same as our time. And uh, the difficulty is how to know God's time in the midst of your time. And, and so when Jesus came, Paul points to the fact that it was not just the time, but it was the fullness of the time. It was the fullness of the time. Um, all of us have one way or the other come into a place where we have prayed for God's timing concerning matters of our lives. We want God's timing. But the question is now, do you know God's timing? And that's why I want to share some pointers for you to have what it takes to grasp what God's timing is. But it's, it, is, it is also a little easier because there's an example that we are looking at, which is so just when the fullness of time came, God sent his son. And so I'm going to share with you some of the things that surrounded the birth of Christ that made it the right time for Christ to be born. And that will also let you understand God's timing. Amen. Um, the timing of God is... Based on the the timing of God is based on definitely the word of God. Amen. The timing of God is based on the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is goes the word of god goes for concerning a particular matter 
And because the word of God has gone forth, it is going to prepare itself for manifestation. God is what we call a manifold. Manifold means that layers of uh, pointers. To understand God's timing, you have to understand the, the eye of God. Why do I say that? The eye of the Lord is able to see everything at the same time. The eye of man cannot see everything. When God sets up a time, his timing is such that everybody that must be present will be there before the time becomes full. You understand that? So when the Bible says the fullness of time, it means that everybody that must be there for that thing to happen has come. Then the time has been full. So, because when in, in, in the Greek language, when they say chronos and kairos, they are dealing with two different kinds of timing. The chronos has to do with the clock time. One, two, three. The time as it uh, moves. The kairos, on the other hand, is the set time with which things will happen. Do you understand that? Right? So, when the fullness of time has come, it means the chronos has now kicked into the kairos. Do you understand that? Right? And so, the chronos, on the other hand, is also the beginning of timing, but it's not the set time. Is that so? So the uh, God help me. Let me say it like this. Let's say the time that the food will be ready is two thirty. Two thirty. The two thirty when the food is ready is called a kairos. Is the time that the event took place. But the chronos is twelve o'clock, one o'clock. So is the chronos leads to the kairos without if you want to see two o'clock you have to see one o'clock if one o'clock don't come two will not come one must come and sit down so two can sit on top of it you understand so so chronos is also important but the first sign that you will understand god's timing is that for when the fullness of time comes it means everybody that is destined to be there is there when you step out of God's timing, somebody that must be there will be missing. Amen. There was a man called Simeon that was tied to when Jesus must be born. Do you understand that? He says that you will not die until you see the birth of the Messiah. That is somebody that must be there for Jesus to be born. Secondly, whenever God's time is about to manifest, you are going to see that a lot of wrong, uh, how do I put it? Uh, let Let me make my life easier. A lot of people came to fake that they were Jesus before Jesus was born. Because when Jesus was born, it was a time that they were expecting the Messiah. Do you understand me? The entire people of Israel were expecting the Messiah to be born. So a lot of people came forth to pretend that they are the Messiah. It's a good news because when you see wrong people coming into your life, it's a sign that the right person is coming. Amen. All right. So, the word of God comes forth and he aligns with people. 
Another thing that shows a sign is the fact that the timing of God also is designed for the purpose of God. I don't want to... I want to, let me say, I want to. I want to let you understand that if Jesus was not born when Jesus was born, it would not have been. Like, uh, the, the time Jesus was born is the most correct, <laughs> the most correct time Jesus can be born. Do you understand that? Apart from the fact that all uh, all the prophetic pointers were there, the truth is the cultural, social, political, economical, and uh, financial, and the world at that time was fine tuned. For the birth of Christ. Jesus came. That you and I might live. To make a people for himself. For that gospel. To go everywhere. There must be the ability to go everywhere. So when Jesus was born. The land. The markings. The rule of. The people. Were such that. The Roman control had permeated every corner of the world, making the gospel able to go everywhere. Are you hearing me? May God bring you to your time so you will see the wisdom of God. Everything was in place for the birth of Christ so that the purpose of his birth can be accomplished. When you are in God's timing, not only will everybody be there, but everything will also be there. I pray that you appreciate God's timing. Amen. And lastly, the timing of Jesus now is... Because let me challenge myself before I close the podcast. All of you, on the surface, on the surface, you will quickly tell me that Jesus was probably not born at the right time. In the first place, they had to hijack somebody's love life to get him a mother. Two people mind their own business. Cute couple mind their own business then they had to hijack the girl somebody's girlfriend for Jesus to be born through her secondly there wasn't no room for him even to be born so if you look at the surface it looks like how can the timing be so right when we don't even have a woman who will carry this child but we have to go kind of interrupt somebody's engagement to get him a mother. Oh, that's how it looks on the surface. Right. But the truth is the time of God is hidden from the eyes of men. Oh, Oh, Jesus. When God's time is up, He hides it from evil men. When God's time is up, He hides it, oh, from haters. When God's time is up for you, He will place it in a manger so that nobody will will mess it up. I prophesy with my eyes open that when that time comes, say as the Lord, you will be surprised what God is doing. So, 
They are pointers to his timing. There is a structure to the purpose. And there's a hidden agenda. Amen. Uh, God's timing lastly answers all questions. Amen. One thing I like about the birth of Jesus Christ is that it brought those who were nobodies to be somebodies. Amen. The birth of Jesus Christ made Mary somebody. The birth of Jesus Christ made Elizabeth somebody. The birth of Jesus Christ made Zachariah somebody. The birth of Jesus Christ made the shepherd somebody. The stars were aligned. Simeon was in place. The Roman government was in place. And then the hidden agenda was in place. Don't you love him? I am praying for you, child of God, that as you step on, only one thing should be clear to you, that I am one day closer to the fullness of time for my life. I hope at some point I will share the testimonies of some of the people that have come into the timing of God for you to know that it will always be like this. It will not always be like this. There's a fullness of time concerning your life. There's a fullness of time concerning your destiny. And as you keep on living and as you keep on trusting, you will come into it. He's able He's faithful. When I stand at the gift center, it becomes clear to me that God has a time. Every item at the center came during the chronos of my life. And when I put it all together, I see the God is at work. Father, we thank you that you are at work. We trust your chronos so we can enjoy your kairos. Be God of our lives as we trust you. Amen. <laughs>